All right, guys, welcome to episode number 191 of the Digital Barbell Podcast. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for your ratings and your <laughs> reviews, whatever channel you're listening to this on. Why are you covering your face? <laughs> it's just the way you do the intros. Also, uh, this is another episode that's on the YouTubes. So if you're only listening to this, you can also look at our smiling oh, yeah. faces um, while you're supposed to be working at work, <laughs> just put us on the side monitor and nobody has to know, <laughs> uh, before we get into this episode, we do have a sponsor returning to the, uh, th not returning. We have a sponsor for oh. this episode. We're sponsored by Butterball. I was thinking the sponsor was Sunmade. Sunmade. Oh, <laughs> leave them for another week. All right. So I know that butterball turkeys are like the gold standard in your family. Your mom will tolerate nothing other than a mm -hmm. butterball turkey at Christmas. Everybody knows they're famous for their turkey. I said Christmas. I mean, Thanksgiving yeah, and Christmas. Both. But, um, but and actually, probably the best turkey we ever had or made was one we got from Trader Joe's hmm. when we lived in Boise. Yeah. But regardless, butterball makes a solid turkey. I guess they don't make turkeys. They just like grow them and kill them and stuff. But um, What's the point? We stumbled upon... I don't know how we even found this, but you can buy Butterball turkey breasts. They I look flip. like the same packaging and all that kind of stuff as the big one that you buy, mm -hmm. but they're small. They're three to five pounds. Three to six, yeah. And they cook really well in the air fryer. It's just breast meat. And it's like this, it smell, makes your house smell like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And it's just a nice, low fat, low calorie, high protein, like, you know, you can just have meat they're on delicious. hand and they're delicious. Yeah. Now it comes in two different varieties. One is kind of a more processed one where I think they actually separate breast meat and then reform it into a big ball. <laughs> <laughs> they encapsulate it in a net, you bake it, and then you cut the net mm -hmm. off. Or you can buy it like in the actual form of the bird where yeah. it's just two breasts With and some, bones on some, it, rib, some yeah. ribs in there and you cook that in. And uh, then you have to. I like that one better it. because it's not as processed. And right. I think they just inject some salt in it mm -hmm. to help preserve it, and it comes frozen, so you got to thaw it out a day or two in advance. But it cooks in the <clears> air fryer in like probably an hour and a half yeah. for the one with the bones in it, and about forty-five minutes for the one without. So there you go. It's like five mm -hmm. bucks a pound, which is not bad for um, for meat these days. So there you go. Yeah. If you're looking for a way to pre-cook some protein, thanks Butterball. <laughs> for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> All right, speaking of this episode, we are going to be talking about nine things you have to do if you want to get shape, you want to get fit, and nine things you have to do to stay mm -hmm. fit once you get fit. I realize that a lot of people that listen to this podcast aren't here because they were looking for like a show about how to bake cookies they because they're interested in fitness. Yeah. So a lot of people are probably going to be like, yeah, I've already done a lot of these things mm -hmm. to get in shape, you know, to where I am now, maybe you'll pick up some tips, but then you're going to find out like, all right, maybe you've gotten fit, but you've kind of regressed a little bit. Maybe these are the things that you need to be focusing on to make sure you maintain your results once you get fit. Cause they're kind exactly. of two different things. So as you're listening to this, this will be a good one to share with a friend who has been like watching your fitness journey and they're, you want to help them, but you don't really want to like give them specific advice. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not receptive to it. Share this episode with them. Cause I think it will be of value to them. So yeah, we're going to go through these things and off we go to the races. All right, let's go. We'll start with the get fit. Um, and you'll see there's some parallels into the staying fit. We'll yep. get into that. All right. These are in no particular order. Okay. All right. Workout. They're, they're in a random order. First workout three or more days per week. I would say three is like the minimum mm -hmm. three days or more up to five to six days per week. Yeah. And I think one of the main reasons this is, is because you have to have a certain amount of, you know, stuff in your training program mm -hmm. to really get results. Yeah. And it's really hard to get that amount of stuff into two days without the workouts becoming like an hour and a half or two hours long. Yeah. And that just leads to decreased compliance. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you're only planning on working out less than three days a week and life happens and you only end up working out one or two days a week, you're just not going to get the results that you want. So yeah. really committing to at least three days mm -hmm. per week. Um, probably our most successful clients work out more than three days per week, but at a bare minimum, if you're looking to go from, um, the couch to getting in shape, yeah. count on at least three days per week. 
And while we talk a lot about the type of training that we promote and the type of training that we give our clients, that is not obviously the only type of workout we would consider when we say work out three or more times per week. This can be whatever you are doing. This can be doing a 30 minute or more walk three times a week. This can be going to do they like zoom do they even have zumba classes yeah, still? Zumba, zumba classes what I'm like whatever you are doing to move your body get yeah. sweaty you know get out of breath make you know that's what we're talking about you got to be doing something you got to be doing something week. three times a week or more make that your expectation Easy. all right second one kind of on the same vein get in like daily steps and movement daily every mm-hmm. day so we, we always look at our watch at the end of the day or throughout the day to make sure like, you know, if it's like three o'clock and we're like, oh my gosh, I have 2000 steps, you know, we'll be like, we need to, we need to do something. Um, so we, we always just like every day, we're just conscious of how many steps we're getting. And yeah. I think that that has really like made a big difference. Yeah. It, in- the best. it increases your calorie burn throughout the day, yeah. but there's also just something about being an active person that keeps your metabolism yeah. cranking. You want to be somebody who burns a lot of calories throughout the day so that you can eat enough calories to give you fuel for all the mm-hmm. stuff that you need to do in your life and just being an mm-hmm. active person is part of that yeah now if you wear something like an apple watch or a garment or a pedometer or whatever and you the first thing i would recommend doing is just kind of seeing where you're at now get a baseline yeah. of how much activity you're getting in and then titrate up from there gradually if you sit at a desk most days and you find out you're only clocking in at 2500 mm-hmm. steps per day it's not necessary to ramp up to 10,000 right. steps immediately you know look to add about 2,000 steps hold that for a couple mm-hmm. of weeks, add a little bit more, you know, research shows that people who get 7,000 or more steps per day are much more likely to maintain their results. Mm-hmm. So if you have to push a little bit higher than that here, when you're trying to be, go from somebody who is not happy with where they're at, with their health, with yeah. their physique, with their body, you know, you might have to push this up closer to the eight to 10,000 or sometimes even more mm-hmm. range, but yeah, but like you said, just just having an awareness in the beginning of where you are. I mean, um, there's days when we're busy and we just feel like we're sitting at our desk and we look down and the steps are low. You know, just what things you can do is just like take a 10 minute break, go take a couple laps, whether it is like up and down stairs at your office or in your driveway or wherever you are. Mm-hmm. You just after you after you have this awareness, you can start to like purposely get these small bits of steps in and it makes a huge difference. Yeah. You can knock out a couple thousand steps in about 10 minutes. And I've said this before, but be intentional when you are trying to get these steps in. We're not trying to turn it into like a high intensity workout, but if you're just sauntering around and looking down at your phone, you're probably going to be walking at like, you know, two miles per hour. (laughs) But if you intentionally do this, put on some music that you enjoy ramp up your pace a little bit Mm -hmm. closer to the three, three and a half mile an hour, um, range, you're going to get more steps in. You're going to get more, uh, bang for your buck when it comes to this time that you're spending on walking. And I will say last thing I'll say about this one, they, the Apple watch has had a lot of improvements in their fitness tracking and they give you like these weekly updates now of where you're trending. So like if you're trending higher or lower than your normal, which is really helpful. I think it's an option you can turn on or off in that health app, but it'll tell you like your stair climbing is higher or lower. Your steps are higher or lower. Your resting heart rate is higher or lower. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. They're, they're keeping track even if you aren't. Yeah. What are they doing with all that data anyway? <laughs> Hopefully they're just letting you see it. Uh-huh. We'll see. Sure. All right. <laughs> all right. The next thing we were thinking um, of a way to just get fit is you, is to find out if there is a deeper motivation that you have than just wanting to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're going to go from point A to point B and you're going to go through the daily processes of what it takes to go from an unhealthy person, uh, somebody who has a lot of extra excess body fat Mm -hmm. to a lean, active, healthy person, you got to have a better reason than wanting to weigh less tomorrow. Right. Just having a goal weight in mind. A lot of things that we hear from a client is having energy to pay, play with their kids, you know, in the afternoon when they get home from work, same thing, having energy to play with grandkids when they come visit, you know, um, sometimes people will say like when people take photos, I tend to like shy away or hide behind people. I don't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for me personally, I've always been like, mine has been to be as healthy as possible. Like, I'm just like, I always just want to be as healthy as possible, keep myself and the, keep myself healthy and active for as long as I possibly can. I mean, that's really like my basis for like the way I eat is solely around like feeling good. Mm -hmm. Like 
I will avoid anything to have like a stomach ache. <laughs> so that, you know, <laughs> right. stuff, stuff like that is my, my sole reason for, yeah. for wanting to, you know, exercise. And yeah. Eat right. So like, that's a, that's a powerful, you know, thing to think about when you have the choice when you have the option to make a choice that yeah. might not line up with what that goal is. But right. like if somebody is only goal is to like hit 130 pounds on the scale, mm-hmm. well, that's like something that's off in the future. And unfortunately we're faced with all these decisions around our food and whether we're not, we're going to exercise every day, like time and time again. And that distant goal kind of loses its, you know, luster and gets a little fuzzy in those moments where we're actually facing the choices that we have every day. Mm-hmm. And it's easier to be like, I'm not going to see the impact of, having this, um, chicken fried steak, you know, right right now, I'll just go ahead and have it. The goal weight can, can come another day. So if that's your only motive, it's going to be really hard to stay motivated and make the daily decisions that you have to, there Mm -hmm. has to be something deeper. And I would even say, when you think about what is your, why say what you think it is, you know, I want to live a long time so Mm -hmm. I can, um, enjoy my time with my kids. All right. Well, why is that important to you? Well, like I didn't have that growing up and it's important for me to have that for my kids. Okay. Well, why is that important? Well, because I want, you just keep going down this until you get to something that actually means something more than just the surface level. Why? Mm -hmm. Yep. And write that down. And like, you know, with sometimes we'll do that exercise with clients and we'll actually put it on their calendar in true coach so that they're constantly reminded of it. Cause if you just do it one time, it's easy to forget. And then when those choices come up mm-hmm. in your journey to get in shape, um, you might forget about it, but if yeah. it's somewhere in front of you and you read it every day, it stays top of mind and, and helps you make better choices. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right. Get ready for this next one. I'm ready. Just start. <laughs> we say this all the time, but there is nothing more true than just starting. It doesn't matter if it's a Wednesday. It doesn't matter if it's the middle of the month. It doesn't matter if it's December 14th and Christmas is around the corner. It doesn't matter if you're waiting for a time of year or time of the Mm -hmm. month that you're not busy. There will never be that time where you feel like you're not busy. Um, it doesn't matter. Like you just have to start and you have to start small and you just have to start chipping away. Mm -hmm. Just start is the best yeah. advice. That should be number one. It's, would you say that <laughs> starting is actually the hardest part definitely, to do? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Walking into that gym, signing up for a mem- you know, membership of something, just doing it yourself, like getting up that morning and, and going into your gym space and, and doing that first workout. That is the hardest thing. Mm-hmm. It's scary. It's not your regular routine. You don't a lot of times it's like you have all of these expectations of like, what is it going to, you know, I can't do this. I can't get up early is I'm going to be sore. You just, I think your mind can, Mm -hmm. I mean, with anything, your mind can just like go wild and give you and let you make excuses. Yeah. And those excuses can turn into months and years Yeah. before you've actually just started. Mm -hmm. Seems kind of silly. Like (laughs) one of the things you absolutely have to do to go from being out of shape to in shape (laughs) is actually start. But that's the thing that holds so many people back. It is. And like you said, so much of it is just fear based around things that we perceive are going to be a struggle in the moment or, you know, we're afraid that we're not going to measure up or this is not going to work for us. But remember that acronym for fear, false evidence Mm -hmm. appearing real. So many of those things that we imagine are never even going to happen. So we like, we live through the fear of them, right. even though they're not actually happening. And then we let them hold us back from actually taking the steps that will get us the results that we want. And it's this messed yeah. up cycle. And a lot of times we feel like we have to have it all like figured out. Like we have to have the Part. everything in place right. and all the whole, the whole plan and know the outcome before we even begin. And yeah. I think that that is what paralyzes us mm-hmm. so much and whatever we're about to begin. Yeah. And if you just start something and you start to figure it out along the way. You always will figure it out along the way or yeah. get help along the way. You made me think of an example, like back when we were flipping <clears throat> houses, yeah. like, you know, I quit my job and in insurance, you were supporting the family. And this was like a sink or swim scenario yeah. basically for me to figure out how to, how to do mm-hmm. this. And like, so in trying to figure it out, I found all these groups of people who were also trying to become real estate investors. And basically these people, these like gurus who had all the information, they'd give you just enough information to kind of know how to start, but then they would want to sell you all the extra information, like their system or whatever. But really the stuff that they were giving away for free or whatever you could find out Mm -hmm. online really was enough to start. And that's what I did. Like 
I put the stupid stuff in place and started making money with it. Yeah. But I like, since I was still a part of these communities and message boards and forums and stuff, I would see these people that would just analyze and analyze mm -hmm. and learn more and want to find out like, what am I going to do if this happens? Like, how am I going to, uh, you mm -hmm. know, cross this bridge if I get to it? It's like, you're going to figure that out when you get there. Yeah. Like, stop letting the fear of trying to figure all this stuff out keep you well, they from were, just starting. They were comfortable in like the research phase. Yeah. Like I'm not doing anything yet. I'm just, I'm researching, I'm figuring out how <laughs> right. to start. And like months could go by before they actually like, or years. I saw the same people do this for yeah. years. They would even like people in and Houston. Investing, would investing like a lot of money in this too. Oh yeah. People would spend 10, 20, $30,000 mm -hmm. on these mentorships. It's like, just put your money where your freaking mouth yeah, is and go out and go. buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a little yeah. sidebar there. No, but that's, that's a really good example. Yeah. Paralysis by analysis is what yeah. it's called. All right. Um, next tip is have some skin in the game. Like if you, if you have invested in a gym, if you have invested in gym membership, if you have invested in a coach, if you invested in like having accountability, you know, you've invested in a plan or equipment, mm -hmm. you have some investment in this. And more often than not, if we have some sort of investment, a lot of times financial, mm -hmm. it makes us, really like stick to something. Take it more seriously. Take it, we take it more seriously. That's why a lot of times, like if any time there's like a challenge, there'll be like a 10 or $20 entry free. And the reason that is, is because if someone has an investment, they take it more seriously than if it's just like a arbitrary challenge up in the air. Yeah. I've heard of like coaches that will say, all right, I want you to write me a check <clears throat> for $500 mm -hmm. and I'm not going to cash that check unless you, you know, don't comply with the program. Yeah. If you do everything that I'm asking you to do, you get the result that we're looking for. I'll never cash <laughs> the check, but at least you had some skin in the right. game. I think it's good that you brought up more than just paying for, um, accountability, mm -hmm. essentially putting that skin in the game. Cause it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. You know, somebody who has a lot of money might be comfortable with, you know, investing in the newest program, hiring this. I got a guy who does this for me. I got a guy who mm -hmm. does this for me. Like them putting money in is not really That's skin true. in the game for them. For them, it might be putting time mm -hmm. into we're actually putting the steps in and doing the things yeah. that the person they've hired to do is encouraging them right. to do. That's the skin in the game. Or challenging that they need. a friend to be like, hold me accountable to this, you know, and that could even be skin in the game where it's like that might be an uncomfortable situation if they if they don't, you know, follow through. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Like finding something that is some skin in the game for you mm -hmm. and it can look differently. Yeah. What's something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable to mm -hmm. commit to doing? Right. That's probably what you need to do to go from, you know, being overweight and unhealthy yeah. to fit and in shape is mm -hmm. put some skin in the game yeah. like that. And that's why you see like a lot of people at, at gyms, like they group, they get in these groups and they go work out together because they have some skin in the game. They have a membership and they also have this, this accountability piece mm -hmm. worked in as well. It's probably like the main benefit of doing challenges in my opinion. Yeah. You know, ch I give challenges a hard time all the time because I feel like most of them are unsustainable and people just go back to whatever they were doing after mm -hmm. the challenge ends. But there is that, that buy-in. Yeah. So if you can find a way to buy in by hiring a, evidence-based coach who's actually there to support you cha-ching <laughs> <laughs> you get the best of both worlds she's pointing at my sweet digital barbell yeah. hoodie. swag all right next tip get comfortable with delaying instant gratification yeah man this this time this stuff does not happen overnight there's not <laughs> there's not the instant pill that we're gonna take yeah that's gonna get us from not fit to fit we put up an Instagram post that said, you know, getting in shape is really just one giant flex of delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our financial advisor, Justin chimed in same thing with investing yeah. <laughs> or retiring. Yeah. So like, yeah, if you like basically look at where you are right now, are you happy with where your health is? Are you happy with where your body composition is? Are you happy with where your energy mm -hmm. levels are? Everything you've been doing up until this point has gotten you there. Mm -hmm. Is any of that based on the choices you've made that might be what sounded good in the moment? If it is, then that's something that we have to address if we're going to help you change into a different version yeah. of yourself. And like we always say, it's not, it would be easier if the 10th donut just killed you because, you know, we're so trained yeah. to go for the dopamine hit and the taste of the sugar and the, the way that we feel de-stressed when we go for these things that give mm -hmm. us instant gratification Skipping the workout makes Chilling us feel good in the moment. Hitting the next the episode yeah. makes us feel good mm -hmm. in, the in the moment. But we have to zoom out and look at, have these choices based on doing what feels good in the moment led us to where we want to be? 
And if we have to go from a different person, mm -hmm. from a, the person we are now to a different person, there's going to be a lot of delayed gratification. But, but there's a bonus dopamine hit that you get when you do a lot of these choices in a row for an extended amount of time. For sure. Is you start to realize how good you feel every time you work out after that workout. You start to feel how good you feel every time you make that choice of not having that donut, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And, then, and, like, and you get like addicted to that feeling. Yeah, of like, for sure. I don't want to go back to feeling sluggish. I don't want to go back to having a headache at three o'clock. I don't want to go back to feeling tired all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think like maybe this, this topic always comes across to people as like, oh boy, here comes the buzzkill. Like I'm never going to get to have <laughs> no, any fun, but no. it's really about living your life within <clears throat> constraints that actually give you freedom. Yeah. Like everybody thinks that living with constraints is like, you know, shackles, no mm -hmm. fun, stoic, everything like that's not, that's just not true. Right. There is freedom in having constraints around your life. It just, makes you feel well, a certain way. Just like on the finance side, which we always compare it to, just, you know, if just because you are watching your money, putting money in a savings account doesn't mean that you will never buy anything again. Right. You will never go on a vacation again. You will never get a new car. No, these are all the like benefits that you get from being responsible with your money is that you get surpluses of money and that you can do these things with. But if you just spend frivolously and bought a new car every day and, and didn't <laughs> care, then like you would have no money. Yeah. That's a great point. Great way to look at that. Being financially responsible actually Gives, gives you, you freedom. freedom with the money that you have left yeah. over. Clip, clip that. <laughs> <laughs> Producer. All right. What number are we on? I don't know. They're not numbered. Okay. Okay. This one kind of comes back to what we were talking about earlier, but um, another tip is to get over your ideals of what working out is and looks like, what eating healthy is and looks like. I think that that is such a huge part of why people don't ever begin is they have these like ideals in their head of like, if I'm a healthy eater, I only eat chicken and broccoli. False. <laughs> right. <laughs> if I, if I'm a, if I work out, I will hate it. Mm -hmm. False. Tons of people work out and they enjoy what they do. You just have to find out, find the thing that you actually enjoy, what kind of movement you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Cause doing zero movement in your life is not an option. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's really not, it's not an option for you to have a long, long you know, a life of longevity yeah. where you have independence and you're healthy. So finding the, something that you enjoy on both sides in a way that you, it, you can incorporate into your life mm -hmm. and, and like getting over the, those ideals of that, this is what I just assume it will be like. And you've never even gone down that road and you've never even tried it. It's like a, this is like a self-talk game, really. Like <clears throat> this is going to, you got to drop all the preconceived mm -hmm. notions that you have yeah. about what it's going to take and, and just go into it with <clears throat> an open mind. You know, like you yeah. said, like maybe you've done something in the past and it's given you a bad taste for something. Mm -hmm. Don't do that thing again. Yeah. <laughs> try, try, try something, something different and go into it mm -hmm. with an open mind. Yeah. Like maybe you have done X diet three times in your life. And like, you feel like the diet worked mm -hmm. at the time and then you lost your result. So you kind of want to do it again. Cause at least you know what to expect. Yeah. Leave all that past behind, try something new and go into it with an open mind. Yep. Another thing is, um, the, uh, the ideal of like what the time frame would look like, like, okay, I'm going to really buckle down for the next six months Ten and minutes. then, you know, <laughs> like getting over these, like we're going to set up a time frame uh -huh. and also when we're going to begin like time frames, both on like how long it's going to take, how long you're going to be willing to put in and how long, when you're going to be able to, when you want to start. Yeah. Like right now we're in, we're in the holiday season. I was just posted a thing about this today. <laughs> and you know, we, we classify these last two months of the year as so these are the holidays yeah. and we can't do anything around the holidays. <laughs> and like the holidays are really like, two days out of the two months, you know, and then like then maybe some parties and extra activities thrown in. But I will say that like probably 95% of your November and December look pretty regular. <laughs> so you can be doing all these things. You can be learning about nutrition. You can be getting training in, mm -hmm. in November and December. Yeah. Um, but there's and, really probably no more. Sorry. That's a, that's a trigger for me. Yeah. Sidebar. <laughs> but yeah, there's probably really not very many extra activities you know, during the during November and December. Then, yeah. you know, oh, I had Memorial Day party to go to. I had the summer there's always trip. A holiday. Like, we yeah. go to Disney World this time of year. Like, yes, there's always there's always something. Yeah. Um, but back to the original thing. Yeah, it was what about, were you talking about? It was about just like you know dropping the preconceived notions of what you think it's going to be like, mm -hmm. and get get out of your own mental game, um, and really 
this goes back to just starting, but you know, don't stop, mm-hmm. don't keep yourself from starting because you're afraid of what it's going to be. Yeah. Just start, trust the process, hire or do something, hire someone you trust or do something that you have seen people have a proven track record with mm-hmm. over the long term. Yeah. <laughs> Cause this is, a, and trust this the process. is, this is like, this is your life now. Yeah. Like it's not a bad, it's not a like jail sentence. It's like, it's okay to be a healthy person. It's okay to make healthy <laughs> right. choices. And like, there's like, you were just talking about with the, the financial side, there's freedom that comes along with that. There's freedom to enjoy yourself at these parties and enjoy yourself at these events because you know that you're taking care of yourself the 99% of the time that's normal yeah. in your life. This kind of goes back to the delayed gratification thing. Yeah. I meant to say this earlier, but like, People forget that when you sacrifice by, you know, making the hard choices now, I'm trying to see if if this ties into, um, what we're talking about now, but anyway, Hmm. when you, when you make the choices now, like everybody just thinks about the sacrifice, but what they're not thinking about as is like the benefit that you're going to get during that time. Also, Mm -hmm. that is actually a reward that you didn't even know was going to come. Probably. We've talked about that before. It's like we, we treat like bad food as a reward for our body and good food as a Oh, I have to eat this like a punishment for your body when right. you're really your body treats it opposite. It's like the good food is a reward for your body, and the the bad food is you know we don't like to label food as good or bad, but no, it's not you know morally good or about. bad. But if a, yeah. if a food makes you feel bad, it is a bad food for you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's move on before we just keep ranting on that. Okay, next one. You need to be doing digital barbell. <laughs> not really, but you do. So you need to be lifting heavy weights. Um, regularly, you need to be doing all your accessory work and you need to be doing the burpees. You need to be doing those things that get you out of breath. You need to be doing some cardio with intensity to be, to be fit. You need to kind of have this fitness around all of these things. You know, there's this, like a lot of people want to talk about, like, I just, I would just want to do the strength training. I just want to get strong. And they don't, you know, you're ignoring at that time, you're ignoring like your heart health, Mm -hmm. you know, or just, I just want to run. And then, you know, at that time you're ignoring your, the muscle tone, the muscle strength that you need as you age. Mm -hmm. So we need to be really doing, hitting all of all three things. Yeah. Again, we're talking about the person that needs to go from out of shape, unfit, unhealthy, overweight to the opposite. Mm -hmm. And like, you don't have to, yes, you should follow a proven training program that's well balanced. You can also, you know, periodize things yeah. like oh, we've yeah. talked about too. spend dedicated time to doing mm-hmm. things. But when you're talking about your overall health and like when we get into what it's going to take to maintain the progress that you made, you mm-hmm. need to have some balance. Yeah. Like you said, if you want longevity, mm-hmm. if you want to remain injury free, yeah. if you want to have muscle mass that supports you in your old age, if you want to keep your metabolism, yeah. you want to keep your resting heart rate down. You gotta, you gotta include all this stuff yeah. in your and, get and some fit of it strategy. might be things that we like, and some of it might be the things that we don't like. But that's that ties into the next one of of doing the my last my last one was you need to be doing hard things, mm-hmm. and that that really, man. I mean, we talk about all the time how much that how much that changes you, not just physically but mentally. Yeah. But doing these hard things, doing these things that you don't necessarily like. I don't like to do burpees. I don't like to do whatever it is, back squats, Mm -hmm. (laughs) these things make you stronger physically and they make you stronger mentally. Every time you do them, every time you do a box jump, every time you, every time you do something that you didn't think you could do, you grow. If it, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. And if you're going to go from who you are now to somebody completely different, you're going to have to push through some hard things. Like, you know, on the practical physical side of it, the best adaptations you'll ever make to your fitness are when you push close to the most that mm-hmm. you can do. That is where the most progress is made. If you've been going to a gym or you've done other programs where the, it's just like, I do three sets of 10 on these five yeah. exercises time and time and time again, it is not challenging you right. anymore. You're not doing hard things. So it's physically not changing mm-hmm. your body anymore. Yeah. And, and, and then that carries over when you change that and you start learning what you're capable of and mm-hmm. pushing yourself yeah. closer to what you can do. It changes the way that you look at all the challenges in mm-hmm. your life. You get a flat tire, like this is no longer yeah. a catastrophe. I have the mental have and physical fortitude to, <laughs> to do this. get out and change this tire. You don't freak tire. out at the moment, yeah. And, and I think, I really do think it, it, it like just lends itself to become, you become this person that's not like, 
complaining about those kind of things. Like, oh my gosh, I had a flat tire. Like I had a flat tire. I got out of the car and changed it. Yeah. You know, like you, the way you would tell that story to someone would, would totally sound differently instead mm-hmm. of like sounding like, oh, it was the worst day of my life. Sounding like you are proud of that thing you did mm-hmm. and that strength that you had to do that. Like, you know, I carried four bags up the stairs by myself. Yeah. I didn't think I could, you know, just, I mean, just every day, everyday things that you encounter, you will like feel differently. You know, about. like being somebody who does hard things as part of your transformation mm-hmm. from an unhealthy to a healthy person, like transforms you from feeling like <clears throat> a victim mm-hmm. in your own life to being the hero yeah. in your own life. I've talked about this many times, but, and I'm stealing all this from Donald Miller, <laughs> but the victim in the story never transforms. And, and think about any movie yeah. where there's a, when there's a victim in there, mm-hmm. they stay a victim the entire time. Otherwise they wouldn't be the victim. Yeah. And sometimes, um, they drag other people down because of their victim mentality. Mm -hmm. The hero in the story makes a transformation from who they started the movie as Mm -hmm. who they were in the beginning of the story into a different person. Usually there's a guide along the way that, you know, shows them the way and helps them make that transformation. But you have to go from being, um, well, doing these hard things Mm -hmm. helps you make that transition into the hero of your own life yeah. who knows that they're capable of doing things yeah. and sometimes grinding against a heavy barbell is that sometimes, um, getting up and doing a workout when you don't feel like mm-hmm. it is that, but it has all these carryovers both physically and mentally. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And it's just amazing to see that the type of like mindset you have, like I said, like after, after you've done this, like instead of, you know, starting sentences like, ugh, this happened, mm-hmm. you just, it's, it's like weird. It's weird how you're, how you, how you change. I don't know what I'm trying yeah. to say. It's like, it's just weird yeah, you, how like, you're just like, you have this enlightened feeling of like every day is like a good challenge, not like, uh, an uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I see this in clients, like make this, yeah. this transformation. Like I'm thinking of one in particular who's had a lot of setbacks with health issues this year and injuries this mm-hmm. year and stuff that's completely outside of his control. And like, we've been working together a long time and I can even think back to, you know, a year ago where when these setbacks would happen, he would kind of start spiraling into a downward, mm-hmm. um, mental right. state. And now it's like, I check in on him and he still talks about the things that he's struggling with, mm-hmm. but in a completely different light. Like yeah. I have these challenges, but look at all these things I have to be grateful for and look mm-hmm. at all the things I still can do. Yeah. And I know it's because he continues to challenge himself and making that conscious decision to focus on the positive yeah. instead of the negative that's mm-hmm. outside of his control. That should be the 10th one. Focus on the positive. There you go. All right. Um, let me review them real quick and then we'll get into the things to do to stay fit. So to get fit, it was work out three or more times per week, get some daily steps, movement in, find a deeper motivation than just, you know, wanting to lose weight. Um, just start the big one. Uh, have some skin in the game by investing in something, um, get comfortable with delaying instant gratification, um, get over the ideals of what working out is, what eating healthy is, um, do digital barbell and do hard things. And our bonus one was be great. Focus on the positive, focus on the positive, being Don't be a victim, be grateful daily. All right. How to stay fit. All right. So our, our, our avatar here has yeah. done all this stuff. Maybe it took <clears throat> six months. Maybe it took a year. Maybe it took two years. But now they are the idealized version of what they want for their health yeah. and fitness. We have to transition all these things, the sacrifices we've right. been making, the approach that we've taken into something that makes us, we can keep forever. Keep, yeah. Because let's, cause that's be, the goal. let's, let's yeah. be honest, like that is the hardest part for it most really people. 95% of people who lose a significant amount of weight regain it after five years. Mm-hmm. That is a terrible, horrible, no good, awful, bad statistic, and I hate it. And a lot of people that come to us from doing other things say uh, commonly, like after X number of weeks, after X number of months, I always quit. Yep. That's like you, you've gotten going, you've gotten that high of like, okay, I started something that's exciting, and then something clicks, and it, and it's and it's now into the phase of like, I need to be doing this consistently and the excitement drops off and you just yep. stop. But I will say a little plug here about digital barbell is a lot of client, although we have a lot of clients say that. And then after they've done some digital barbell programming for a while, they're just like, I didn't want to quit this one. 
because I kept true that I kept being challenged <laughs> and I like how Blakely makes out makes workout names funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a direct quote right there. If you didn't know, I are you crying? No, <laughs> if you didn't know, I theme every week's workouts. So like this week it's Mariah Carey week. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I haven't seen that so, yet. Yes, you just didn't know it. So there's some funny, because Mariah Carey, you know, uh, it's December now almost. And, you know, she's been popular this time of year. So so you have to, like, be think about, like, what all the names of the workouts kind of put together the theme. I used to do this at my gym triad, and, like, people would try to be the first one to guess it, and then they would get their name somewhere. Uh-huh. Um, who, guessed it, who guessed it first? But anyway. The name game, we yeah, called it. It's, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, you can, <laughs> you can still play along if you get our workouts. So just look for that theme. All right. All what right. are the nine things we have to do to stay in shape? Stay in shape. Continue to work out three or more times per week. Don't let that slip off. You did it for your, your you know, however long. Don't let that start to slip to one or two. Yeah. And if, right. but like, uh, let me just bring up, like mm-hmm. if you were somebody who mm-hmm. worked out five times a week to get fit and you were like making a lot of sacrifices yeah. during that time, you probably can yeah. go back to three times a week with a well-designed program. You don't have to keep doing exactly as much as you were doing right. to maintain your progress. So that, long as yeah. you still address everything that you need to be hitting in your three day a week program. That's a really good point because often even in my own training and sometimes, you know, I'll get up to where I'm doing like five sets and then I'm like, well, that's it. I just do five sets now. Like, and you're talking and about like, like, you know, like five, if, you got five like, exercises. If I'm doing like doing bench five. press, I'm like five sets of bench press. And I'm like, well, I've done five now. I cannot go back. <laughs> you can, you're not, I'm not going to like decrease. Right. Um, I don't know why I use bench press as an example. It's not like I'm over here bench pressing every week, like all the time, but anyway, we know what you mean. (laughs) Yeah. Like you, you, yeah. The, the amount of actual exercise volume required to maintain muscle mass, especially cardiovascular fitness is, is not as much as it takes to get it in the first place. Now, like, you know, you're going to go at this on your own. I think we talked about this Mm -hmm. in another episode, like make sure that you are, doing enough to maintain. Yeah. You can't just like, now I'm not going to work my legs anymore and I'm just going to focus on <laughs> my triceps and shoulders. Like, no, like you need, you still need balance. Right. Right. Okay. Next one. I mean, these are not all going to be like continue with this, but this next one is continue to get the daily steps in, continue to get the movement in. And if, you know, if you started off and you were getting like that five to 7,000, maybe you start to ramp it up to that eight to 10 mark mm-hmm. or so on. One of the, one of the benefits of getting lean is that you increase your insulin sensitivity. Mm-hmm. And one of the best ways to maintain your insul- insulin sensitivity is by staying active yeah. through your daily steps. So that's, a, that's mm-hmm. another reason to keep the, your non-exercise activity high. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just among the other benefits, like it's a time where you are doing something purposeful for your health and like just Mm -hmm. the act of doing that and being deliberate about making the decision to go out to do that is a health promoting behavior that helps people stay hashtag on track. Yeah. Um, monitor your metrics. So this is a, this is a big one, especially if you had been working with a coach and now you're not, and you're just, and you're doing this on your own, um, continue to monitor your weight, your, um, taking progress pictures, measurements, just like really how close fit is this great metric that we have that we can, that we can easily track. Yeah. This is really all just about maintaining awareness of how, what you're doing is affecting your results. Like if you had some goal in mind for your fitness, you did all the things we talked about in the first 10, you reached Mm -hmm. your goal and you're like, well, I'm never stepping on the scale or trying on, you know, the clothes that I use as a gauge for whether I'm gaining or losing anymore. You stop doing that. And then like, you know, as humans, sometimes our habits start to creep back in Mm -hmm. and then you finally step on the scale at the doctor's office and you're like, I gained eight pounds in the last three months. Like if you had been monitoring yourself more frequently along the way, like you would have caught what was going on and be able to, you know, make small adjustments before you felt like you're in this like critical, I got to do something Mm -hmm. mode. So, you know, and also like continuing to monitor your metrics, whether it's your body weight or your measurements or whatever, like it continues to desensitize the, the data to you to where it's not something that you see as a reflection of your own Mm -hmm. value as a person, your goal with measuring your weight, um, should be to kind of detach your emotions from it and just look at it yeah. as data. And you can use the data, how you see fit based on what your goals are, but mm-hmm. we never want somebody's mental 
worth to be tied up in what their weight is and just continuing to keep track of it can keep you desensitized to that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next tip is find something, uh, find out if there is something that you're ignoring that was like keeping you from starting for a long time in the first place, like identify and tackle that, that root cause of why you didn't ever want to, to go down this journey. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you, it's easy to ignore something for a little bit of time, but if it's like this, this big lingering thing, um, in the back of your mind, more than likely it'll, it'll cause you to quit as you get down the road. Yeah. So if you've, if you've identified that thing, whatever it is for you, then, then you can at least, you know, tackle that yeah. and, and get through that. And that, and it won't, it won't let you quit now. I want to put a little spin yeah. on this one too, in that, <clears throat> As you try to maintain the progress that you've made, you have to get really honest with yourself. If there was something in your journey mm -hmm. that you were suppressing and just sticking with the program while you got the result, yeah. and then is there a chance that this thing that you were suppressing is going to come back out and derail you? I just said. Okay. Well, I'm saying it again. <laughs> but now you said it would like keep you from starting. I'm no, talking identifying about like, if there was something to keep you from start that kept you from starting all those years. Okay. Well, that's, this is yeah. different. I, you're, I agree with that one, but this is a different point. Cause I've just seen yeah. it in like in nutrition clients specifically. Like if somebody has, um, an emotional issue with eating mm -hmm. and they are able to like, let's say they're going to do 75 hard or whatever mm -hmm. they are able to kind of buckle down, suppress their emotional eating for all 75 right. days of 75 hard, they lose 35, 40 pounds during that time, but they never dealt with the underlying issue causing the emotional eating. They yeah. just kept pushing it down and down and down. It's going to come back and mm -hmm. it's going to be something that causes you to lose your results. Mm -hmm. So whatever that thing is for you, if there is anything, you got to get honest with yourself and deal with it at the root cause, whether it's going to see a counselor or whether it's mm -hmm. making amends with, you know, somebody that you have a failed relationship with, whatever it is, like you can't, Whatever you did to get the result is going to be a temporary fix yeah. unless you get to the root cause. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be an integral part of you maintaining think, yeah. the fitness that you've earned up until mm -hmm. this point. I think this next one um, is a tough one, and but it it is in the same line of what we were just talking about: embracing the new identity of like of who you are and this what this healthy version of yourself looks like. Because you know this is going to make this is going to mean like making some different choices. Yeah. It could be making, you know, different choices when you go out to restaurants. It could be maybe making different choices about vacations you take. Maybe there's certain vacations that you took that led into this other unhealthier lifestyle that you were leading. I mean, it could be like even as, as, as hard as like being in these social circles. Like if you, if you know that like during football season, you get together with fantasy football, like, and you just, you know, eat and drink every week, for, you know, this stuff that you just like, I don't, if I'm around that, I will, I will dive back into that like mm -hmm. for months, you know, you have to yeah, like, this is you need all, to yeah. make a clean break from the identity that didn't serve you yeah. before you became this new version of yourself. Right. Just, this was like what uh, last Monday's podcast was about, but, yeah. and this is hard. It is. This is hard because it's really an identity change, but there's things you can do to like ease the transition into doing this is, mm -hmm. you know, find a new, maybe this is a, maybe this is a spoiler alert, but finding a new community that does support your existing goals, yeah. finding other people who have the same identity as you and kind mm -hmm. of teaming up together. I think this can sound like a Debbie Downer, but I, it won't, it, I don't think it is, you know? No, like, not, not in reality. Yeah. Not in reality. Cause you've, you've already, you've already done the getting fit and you're in, you're in the staying fit, you know, mentality now. And, and it is, it is important to, to try to surround yourself with like-minded people. And so maybe that was one of the issues before it was like, you were, I mean, I'm trying to say like, drop all your friends. It sounds like, it sounds bad, but no, but like, no, you gotta be honest with just, yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, is there certain situations in your life that were, that were like t trending toward that unhealthy person that you were? Yeah. Like it our, can be anything. the example I gave you yesterday oh. is like, if you're the president of your city's <laughs> bourbon club and, and that's like a stumbling block for you yeah. when it comes to maintaining your health, that's probably something that you're going to have to change as part of your new yeah, identity. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's not like canceling all your friends, but right. that's, you know, like an alcoholic trying to be a bartender mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, you know, there's some changes in identity that are just going to have to take place if yeah. you don't want to go back to the old version of yourself. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Next one. What? It's kind of lame, but <laughs> why is it lame? <laughs> Consistency has to be <laughs> like your new best friend. Like this stuff all uh, just takes consistency. It's like with everything. It's why do we brush our teeth every day? Mm -hmm. We consistently want to, we have to consistently do it. If we brush our teeth once a month, we're going to end up having cavities. Yeah. If we, if we, you know, only look at our budget once a year, we're not going to have any money. If, you know, (laughs) if like just all of the stuff takes consistency. Maybe, maybe in like some, put some concrete terms to this. Cause I think consistency is one of those words that gets thrown around, thrown around a lot, even by us. And like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't really mean there's no like concrete definite. How consistent do I have to be? Yeah. Like I know people but, that consider consistency being a hundred percent perfect. Yeah. So it's kind of perfect. redefining, like once you've reached your goal, maybe, maybe what you did to get that point to that point mm-hmm. is like, is no longer the definition of consistency. Yeah. You need to reassess like, you know, do, can I lower the bar on what it took to get there and make maintaining mm-hmm. that new level consistently my goal to maintain yeah. my progress. Like we talked about, maybe you, you worked out five days a week over the last year to, to lose the weight. And now you're going to pull back to three. Now your goal is to maintain that yeah. consistency. Let go of the, the past where five was the goal, maintain the new goal as your, as what is considered consistent mm-hmm. for yourself. Maybe you tracked every calorie to lose the weight. Now maybe you're spot checking yourself twice a week. And that mm-hmm. is your new consistency goal. Turning like you know, when you are in a phase trying to become a fit person, there's a lot of focus on the outcomes that we're chasing. Maybe now the outcome that we're chasing is just to be consistent with the behaviors that this new healthy version of yourself does mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah. All right. Next one is, um, feed yourself with inspiration. So this can look like the Instagram feeds that you follow. It can be the podcast that you listen to, the books you listen to, um, the friends you hang around with, um, like now that you're, you know, that you have this level of fitness, like learning, learning new sports and like using your fitness, like yeah. going hiking, doing bike riding, whatever it is that you enjoy, like using what you've got and, and just feeding yourself daily. Yeah. Like, like you said, get on YouTube and like find some yeah. interesting channels about fitness that are fine that you find entertaining and yeah. that are evidence even challenge you to learn, you know, learn right. and try new things. Go like look on Amazon in the mm-hmm. fitness category for books. Get on Audible, download some audiobooks, subscribe to more helpful podcasts yeah. that keep you motivated. Like keep all these positive in- inputs coming into your mm-hmm. brain. Don't be afraid to like filter out the ones that don't really support you too. I mean, yeah. like if you also like to follow um, an Instagram account that posts pictures of cupcakes every single day, Food blogger, <laughs> maybe that's not yeah. the most helpful thing that's going to make you maintain your progress. Yeah. Like. And just person to person. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you got to know your own triggers, but the right. point is like put as many inputs, a positive inputs, inputs and support, supportive inputs into your brain mm-hmm. as you can. It's just going to like keep fitness top of mind as yeah. this new version of yourself. Yeah. And in that same vein, the next, the next tip is to continue to do hard things. So like these things might change for you as, as the person that you are changes. So continuing to, you know, if like getting up and getting your workout in and first thing in the morning or making this, you know, decision of what to order at a restaurant is no longer your hard thing. You got to find some new hard things yeah so that you don't become complacent. Just like before, like what yeah. do, what doesn't challenge you doesn't change yeah. you. So continue to challenge yourself right. mentally and physically. It makes me think of our, our, our client, our client, Bernie, who uh, <laughs> I, I think we've talked about him in another podcast is just like, I love working with him. He's in his seventies and, and he's constantly doing these new things, taking, you know, taking trips where he's hiking. He's just like using his fitness and he discovered his fitness at a, a pretty late age in life. Mm-hmm. And, and he's challenging himself and, it, and it, you know, it just, it's just very inspi- inspiring. We are and my uncle, the same is in 78. My uncle is 78 and he was over for Thanksgiving. And I think like, most of our conversation was about fitness in their gym. My aunt and <laughs> yeah. uncle, they go to the gym six days a week and we're talking about he's, he, you know, how much he runs, you know, how much weight, how he's much weight pressing he's de- and now, I mean, at 78, he decides to take on deadlifting. Like yeah. he's always just been bench pressing and doing this, these classes. He's like, I'm going to start to deadlift. I'm just like, it, it, I love it. I love it. It's, just, <laughs> it's so inspiring to still have, it's not even that old, you know, to still have that kind of a mindset of wanting to like learn new things and challenge yourself and get stronger and get better. Yeah. That's kind of one of the reasons, like besides my shoulder issue, mm-hmm. why I decided to like start working on my mile running yeah. times, just a new challenge 
to go after right. it. I mean, I've reached like the absolute pinnacle of fitness and performance <laughs> already. So I have to keep looking for What's new. Next? <laughs> no, but really like, yeah. like you said, CrossFit's, um, term is learn and play new sports. Right. It's like once you, mm-hmm. You know, it work, you work your way up the pyramid and once yeah. you have achieved fitness, you learn and play new sports, mm-hmm. like go out and find these little micro motivations that you can chase to keep you, keep you motivated. Like yeah. keep you, let me rephrase that. Find these things to chase that will lead you to taking the actions that will make you motivated to yeah. keep pursuing. Just having the goal in and of itself isn't motivating. But if you have a physical thing that you're doing every day, working towards a goal mm-hmm. that will motivate you to keep going. Yeah. All right. Last one on the side is, um, continue to keep some skin in the game by investing in, in something like, um, it makes me think of like, you know, eventually getting a a home gym, maybe, maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe, um, our friend recently did this. He's always like, you know, been like, I can do it at, I can do it at the Globo gyms and he has two small, two small kids now and to stay in the game. I mean, he's been doing this for over a decade, but to stay in the game and to do it regularly, he's like, I got to invest in my own gym, got a barbell, got a squat rack, got the stuff. And now his wife's joining them, you know, Mm -hmm. like for us, it looked like we got some adjustable dumbbells so that we can take them camping with us because of that we, when we're out on the road, we can still, you know, have, have some weights and have a good variety of weights. It can, it can look different for everybody, but yeah. just continuing to invest and in, even like signing up for a race yeah. or, some, or entering a competition like a 5K, for something. Like that's, the, the that's turkey putting, trot. <laughs> yeah. That's putting skin in the game. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Shows that you're serious. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, I'll, I'll review this one real quick. Okay. How to stay fit, continue to get those workouts in, continue to get that daily movement or steps in, um, monitor your metrics. Um, Find out if there was something that was that you were ignoring that was keeping you from even starting in the first place. Um, embracing the new identity of the healthy version that you are and making choices if needed. Um, feed yourself with inspiration. Um, make consistency your new best friend. Um, continue doing hard things and continuing challenging yourself and keep some skin in the game. I love it. All right. All right, so quick shameless plug. We're coming up on the time of year where a lot of people are prioritizing mm-hmm. their health and fitness. We work on we work with people every single day one on one doing this exact stuff through customized training programs, through one on one nutrition coaching. The goal is to take all the concepts that we talked about here and custom tailor them to your life, your mm-hmm. situation, your goals, your struggles, your equipment, your schedule, your history. Yeah. <laughs> is that enough of yours? Yeah. And make it something that you can not only get a result with, but like we spent the last 30 minutes talking about, maintain it as a lifestyle. That's the goal overall. That's what mm-hmm. we want for you. We don't want you to become a statistic where you get a great result with your fitness and then you regress from it. And that's what we're all about. Yeah. We hope we found this one helpful. Yeah. I'll put the link for where you can talk to us about coaching with us mm-hmm. in the show notes for this episode. But we hope you have a good day and that you enjoyed this. We'll catch you next time.